Hello again, welcome back. Uh, last time we met, we were talking about doing a box bellows uh, out of mahogany, and I was roughing out the boards. So I didn't film for a couple days and kind of went crazy and just started putting everything together and doing it. Uh, the box joints didn't work out, so to speak. I had my jig was off, and when I started doing it, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. So we ended up doing a like a corner block. So I'm kind of walk through, show you what I did in the last couple days, and then uh, show you where we're at now. All right. All right, so here's our box bellows. Not very good camera angle, but I'll spin it around and show you as we go. Um, again, these are the mahogany boards. We've roughed up, tongue and grooved, put them together, glued them up. And then as you can see, I had to go with a corner block instead of the box joint. Turn it on the front here. So what I did was I made these corner blocks that are actually yeah, you see that. So they are notched in and wrapped the corner, and that's glued and clamped overnight. So that's more than enough gonna keep any air from getting out. It was kind of my detail after the box joints went to hell on me. But that's what happens. You kind of gotta roll the punches. Uh, these are my piston holes. I did a double piston or a double handle for the piston so the piston was st more stable uh, my air intake holes if you turn a little farther you can see down here are my collector holes and then on the other side the back of it my other air intake intake holes and all i did was glue it and clamp everything together I'll hold it all nice and tight so the box is done I apologize for not showing you guys me building the box, but I was having fun and, well, I'm new to filming, so I really avoid filming if possible, which isn't cool. So other than that, though, I did other stuff. I got the top done, and I actually got the handle done, the start of the handle and the piston. So I'm going to show you that. So here's our top. This is the one with the cedar in it, due to lack of the mahogany. And then what I did was I added an edge banding around the edge of it that hangs down a little bit. And then on top of that, I glued and screwed this block on, which insets into the box. It makes the distance a little smaller, but it gives me a really tight seal. So I thought it was a good, you know, whatever, you know. You know what I'm saying. I can't fucking say it. Either way, though. So that's glued, screwed, all put together. All miter on the corners, kind of just gives it a nice detail, and I help keep it flat too, so I won't get that twisting and rolling as the thing goes outside. I will end up varnishing it, but I still it'll be out in the weather. My shop is outside, so you know it looks nice with a nice trim around it. It sits nice, so we're gonna go over there. And now the handle. It's pretty straightforward, but it's got a lot of pieces to it stuff out of the way. So my handle assembly. We have a notch here, a notch here. These are stops. One's on the outside of the box, one's on the inside of the box. So as it slides, it stops and doesn't block the collector hole. And as it slides back, it stops on the back of the box, doesn't block the collector hole going back. This notch here is a stop block notch so that my piston rides up against that and then I have a tapered wedge that slips down and holds my piston on tight. And that's a one in four taper, just cut with a drill and chisel it out. And I just did that little mortise there. So we're gonna put it together. I half lapped everything because it gives everything a reference, it squares itself, it makes it fit really nice. So I have one here, one here, top and bottom. Um, laying them out, make sure you mark top and bottom because they will get crossed on you. Here's my spreaders. This measurement is exactly the measurement from the top of the square hole to the bottom of the square hole in the front of the bellows. No matter what, everything has to gauge off that so you don't bind going in. That's hugely important. And then we'll just use some spring clamps to put all this together. Luckily, I did all the fittings so I don't have to look bad on camera. Uh, but again, here's a tendon saw. I marked, knife marked everything, did a stop cut. Use a tenon saw, do my notches, and then chisel it out the waist, and then file it down so that I have a really clean fit. And then, of course, I went back and, and fit them again and again and again until I had them where they should be. 
So everything should drop right into place. Everything is marked. So I have an arrow on here. That means it goes up. This is my bottom. So we're gonna put it like that. And we're just gonna use uh, spring clamps right now. Eventually this will all be glued because I'll show you a cool trick I did on top of all this other cool tricks I did, full of cool tricks. And then when I did the half laps, one's under, one's over. I don't know if you can see that. So this one laps under and this one laps over. And I thought that would give me cross support. I don't know if it will. It made sense. It looked cooler. So there you go. Just clamp this together. And again, that was the. I did it backwards. Bear with me, people. There we go. So again, this was just all half laps. I milled all my stock to the same inch and an eighth by seven eighths. I thought a little stiffer would be better. And then from there, I cut all my half laps by hand. But as a milling stock, set up your plate once, mill everything, and go from there. And mill one extra piece because who are we kidding? Unless you're mean, you're perfect. <laughs> all right, so that's all we're gonna put together is the front two. So as you can see, as we clamp it, the half laps hold it pretty rigid, and that fits together nice. Now, our piston. Again, mark your top. I made it an eighth inch all the way around. I plan on wrapping it in raccoon fur. Um, which is what it was traditionally done, that or some type of foam for when it happens. From there, this layout was the most difficult, getting everything to line up straight and square. So as you can see, that fits nice and square. And then we take our pins, they're tapered on one side, just slip them down. And with a hammer, one. It does exist. A hammer, a few taps, Sets those pistons, sets the piston so that it can be removed, put new fur on to mess with it. You know, you know you're gonna have something go on. Wax it, I don't, I don't know. I've never built one, so I just know it'd be easier to make it removable. What I did do, what I did do, what I do do, I don't know. What I did do was I made the distance from this side of these rails so they would fit in the box so I could glue these lower ones together and leave that together. And then the piston will slide on, the wedges will go in. I won't have to take that apart ever. The other end, where I have my last cross piece, which goes on the outside of the box. So this has to go in the box, then this goes on. I think what I'll do is I'll just dowel it and glue it. So if I need to, I can drill all the dowels and still have the pieces. Or maybe I'll just dowel it. I don't know if I'll have to glue it. So let's put that together and show you how this all goes in. The piston slides in. We line up the holes from the inside. And slide it out. So if you can see that. Now I have a nice rigid post. Slide nice and easy. Stop block hits. Stop block will hit. Now we'll stand it up. As you saw before, I left these half laps here. So I have my half lap piece right there. It's gonna slip in this half lap down here and then come back. So we get a little closer for you. That's a little better. Slip in here, come back and fit right there. So there you go. That is my stop lock. So when I push all the way in, that's where it stops. I'm not banging against the piston inside. I'm not banging against the back when it comes back. It has these solid blocks to hit, make everything nice and smooth. It'll definitely need some butcher's wax or 
wax and fur, linseed oil. I'm not sure how we're going to finish it, but that's not even the handle. What I have is an old piece I did a job down the street with putting up some handrail. So I have a cheap fur handrail, uh, Lowe's Home Depot buy. That's going to go on the end. And I think we're going to do some fun joinery on that too. Maybe some mortise and tenons, split wedges, something like that. I don't know. It's going to have to come off again just like the other one, but I'm more interested in making it pretty uh, detailed at this point. The little extras because the box joints didn't go so well. So other than that, That's the box bellows as it stands now. So, there it is.